to Father John. Okay, the, what we're talking about, see, there's a fine line there that it's, it's a difference that not everybody can understand. It's right like, away. And, it, I, and, it's and if like you're an illiterate, Germanic, poor, illiterate person, you can easily misunderstand. It's like it. you, it's interesting because you know one of the things that that Augustine dwelled on particularly was his notion of uh, of the fall of Adam and Eve. Okay, he believed that when Adam uh, and Eve, when God gave the command, "You shall eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and you sh shall surely die." Augustine if you believed eat from that tree, if you, you eat from that tree, die. yeah. Augustine believed that this was that God was saying, "If you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, against my will, I will kill you." I will kill you. That's the difference between I will kill you and you will die. A and the fathers all understood this as a warning mm -hmm. that, that if you go through certain actions, then it will result in certain negative consequences. And that God... Death, eventually. Yes. Death, which and is that, another thing. Yes. And that God's view of man is not looking around for rules in, in order that he can punish them, but more like the uh, careful Caring. protector. The therapist, the, the healer. The therapist, the healer saying, don't do this, don't do that, because it's going to hurt you. That the Ten Commandments were not laws set down. Merely to, merely for to, their own sake. Merely for their own sake, but they were tools telling you, you want to live in harmony, you want to have a peaceful life, obey these laws. That's the Old Testament. Now, we can go even further. If you want to live peaceful, harmonious life, obey these Old Testament laws mm -hmm. and... But now, in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, you'll have eternal life. life. If, you, if you take your uh, medicine, do your therapies, polish your noetic faculty telescope, and then when, I find, when you finally have the vision of me, which everyone is going to have, the vision of it'll God. It'll be a vision of paradise. It'll be, it'll be uh, how does Father John describe the Holy Fathers is describing it? It'll be a vision of light yeah, rather than a, vi vision. a vision of, un of consuming fire. There's a di difference there. In other words, you either, you either suffer or you won't suffer. Now, Speaking about happiness, are Orthodox Christians seeking after happiness? Is that what we're looking for? Is that what heaven is? Is, is it happiness that... Well, that was another thing, that uh, another problem with Augustine. Augustine believed that the goal of human life was to seek after happiness. This kind of platonic ideal, you know, uh, that I'm going to be in paradise and happy sitting among the daffodils playing my harp. You know, all of the images that people have of what heavens was supposed to be. And he says this is part of the sickness of man. This is what who's saying this? Uh, uh, Romanides was saying. Romanides is, exp is, a, is, is expressing explaining the, that Augustine's idea of happiness is the main problem um, of society today. Yes, it's the main sickness. It's one of the sicknesses that is happiness seeking. Yes, that that produces much of the evil in the world. In other words, people are out there seeking after ha too much happiness, rather than seeking after God, seeking after love of neighbors, seeking after. Self-sacrifice, you know, the, if you read... Well, seeking, seeking after self-sacrifice is part of the therapy, I think, yes. that leads us to the vision of God, God yes. which is a kind of a joy that can, you really can't describe it as happiness. No. Uh, see, happiness is, a, is a, a, a trite, petty experience that human beings have, not to do away with happiness. We all like to be happy. It's, a, it's almost like a drug. But it's something that Augustine has turned into the purpose of existence yes. for human beings. And in fact, uh, it's enshrined in our own Declaration of Independence. What are the oh, right, right. life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are the inalienable rights that are granted to us as people. That's, that's Augustinian, and that's, yeah. that's not orthodoxy. That's not Roman civilization, as the, the Franks unfortunately did not understand. Now, uh, let's get back to the uh, point you were making about, um, about Augustine, about uncreated energies and What's the difference? Father John in here talks about the uncreated energies of God. What is that? What, are, what is that as opposed to the created energies of God? What do we experience when we experience God, when, we, when our noetic faculty has been purified? Well, this is a fundamental difference between Augustine and the, what we would consider the orthodox patristic tradition. Augustine believed that there was no direct communion between, uh, direct communication between the Father and the, uh, and the okay. created universe. That, in fact, uh, God created intermediaries. He created the burning Say that again. Now, in other words, th there's, no, there's no similarity between God and creation? No. There's uh, no direct uh, There's no direct communion between God and creation. That, in fact, uh, these epiphanies uh, throughout all of the Old Testament and with the fathers were, uh, since God, you know, he took the radically uh, dualistic notion that, that God is ultimately transcendent.
Who took that notion? Augustine. Augustine. That God is ultimately transcendent. And that there can be ultimately no uh, communion between God and man. Then what was the purpose of... Uh, what was the purpose of man, well, according to Augustine? If you can't have communion with God, then what are, we, what are you attempting to do with your life as a Christian? Well, you couldn't have communion with God in, in, in a direct sense. Okay. You could uh, have communion through uh, with His created uh, graces. His created graces. Okay. Then what is the Orthodox Christian saint experiencing? The Orthodox Christian saint is experiencing communion with God's uncreated energies. Uncreated energies. In That's other words, they're not a part of creation. They're not creation at all. They're not idols. They're not, they're uncreated. They're God's energies themselves. That's they're not right. something that is temporarily made so that we can experience them, experience, experience them. And see, the Orthodox... Now let's wait. Uncreated energies as opposed to created energies. energies. We only have a few minutes left. I want to make this point. God's uh, uncreated, his, the difference between his essence and his energies is what I want to get at. Uh, in other words, we are not experiencing the essence of God when we become God experiences. When we, no, when we because saints. by essence, God is transcendent and uncreated. Right. So, but we can experience His energies. In other words, we can't look directly at the sun. No, but we can. But we feel can feel the, the heat of the sun. Right. We can see the light of the sun. We can see. The, we can experience the energies of the sun. That's correct. But we're not going to be able to experience the essence of the sun. That's correct. So, in, when we're experiencing God as a saint. What a saint is experiencing is just just those uncreated energies. Of That's God. correct. And Augustine didn't understand the difference between the essence and the uncreated energies. No, in of fact, God. he would would never make the distinction, that, uh, even that there were uh, there was a difference between essence and uncreated energies. In fact, uh, if you sat down with him and tried to explain to him uncreated energies, it would be because it didn't fit with this Platonic uh, Greek pagan pagan idea, which he brought with him when he came into Christianity. So to wrap up in the first few minutes, we'll, we'll continue this discussion on our next program. Basically, what we're saying here is that you had a system of experiencers, a system where uh, God was being uh, experienced by doctors, and these doctors were leading the patients to that same experience. And the writings, the Bible, the, the, all these scriptures were basically, when astronomers look at the, the stars, they write down their experiences in a book. Yeah. And then fellow human beings can pick up these books and then have that same experience of those stars. That's, that's basically what the Orthodox Church's scriptures are, the Bible and, 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 and the writings the of the Fathers. And, uh, Whereas in the West, and under the Frankish speculators, you have basically people who believe that the, they base their whole church on these writings themselves, that they believe that these writings are actually the Word of God, not about God themselves. <laughs> They're not... They well, they well that's why, you know, this whole notion of, the, the, uh, of, of infallibility of, uh, of the written word is not part of the Orthodox tradition. Right. There, in other words, the written word is basically about God. It's, not, it's about revelation. It's not, not revelation, revelation itself, itself, yes. Which is not what the Western tradition teaches. No. And according to the Western tradi tradition, the Bible is the word of God himself. And that's why there's this confusion between uh, the word of God who is Christ, the logos of God. Okay. We've got to wrap up. Michael will pick this up from our, on our next program. Thank you for watching Orthodox Christian Television. Please uh, tune in next time. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,